King Kong, the original, not the one released in, I think, 2005. The one in 1933 was just this random monster movie. Of course, there was stuff like Frankenstein and the Invisible Man, but nothing ever exceeded the scale as much as King Kong did. But why is King Kong such a great monster film? Let's discuss that. The performances in this are really good. All the characters are believable and everyone looks and acts as if any real person in the real world would. Or at least the best performances you could get in sometime like 1933. Afraid I didn't apologize very good for hitting you just now. That was a pretty tough rap on the chin. Uh -huh. <laughs> The best and most notable ones are Anne, Carl, John, and the Captain. Let's go over each one of these characters and talk about why they're so good. First, let's go over Anne. Anne is this girl who is pretty much homeless, or at least seems it. She gets an acting gig from a big time filmmaker slash photographer and thinks that she's getting a nice cruise and getting to star in a big film, but soon realizes that's not exactly what this is. This character is so interesting because the entire time she thinks she's on, like, she's very excited to be like, you know, this film and go on this cruise, but her reaction when she realizes that it's not, you know, much more than that, and worse, makes this just as amazing. Then there's Carl. Carl's this big time filmmaker slash photographer who wants to travel to this island to get his best and biggest picture yet, but yet he needs a girl because he thinks it'll sell better. So he goes out and finds Anne. Throughout the whole film, he really doesn't change. He always kind of wants to get this picture and just no matter whose life is at risk. I mean, he seems scared at one point during the movie, but that's really it. He's a good character nonetheless. Then there's John. John's kind of just a soldier and a tag along on the ride. But in the beginning, Anne hangs around him a little and he's not too keen on having a woman on board. Since he believes women shouldn't go on these type of missions and they just get in the way. Come on, it's the 1930s. I guess you don't think much of women on ships, do you? No, they're a nuisance. But he starts to, to develop feelings for Anne, and he basically goes on a suicide mission to help her in the end to get, you know, safe. He has some good development throughout the film, and yet again, is another entertaining character to watch. Last but not least is Captain. Uh, there's not much to say, this, like, you know, about him and everything besides. He's pretty entertaining to watch, too. There's some funny scenes in the movie with him and everything trying to translate to the tribes. Tabe. Bala kum no no hi. What he said. There are some side characters that are like, you know, cool and funny too, such as the guy on the boat and everything. I think he's, I'm not sure what like nationality he is, but he's pretty funny too. I'll see you one, two hours. When we leave this place, we know like. Um, the tribe is pretty cool. Scary and a little funny at some times. The monsters in this film are all amazing. Obviously, they all don't look great because it was the 1930s, but for their time, they're great and I really enjoyed all of them. They're all scary and what I feel, you know, they, they had some stuff going for them. Let's go over my favorites. The first obviously has to be Kong. He looks really fucking scary, which as I said is what, you know, I feel they were going for, but he's just terrifying. He's really well designed for his time, but um, with the girl Anne, it just doesn't work. I guess they were trying to show Kong was just trying to help her and he has some kind of like, you know, you know, sweet side and everything to him. But he just looks so fucking scary that it just doesn't work. I don't know. Like, this shit keeps me up at night. The Loch Ness monster looking thing, I thought that was like, you know, when it was in the water at least, it looked really scary and good because of all like, you know, the fog and just like the mysteriness or whatever. The one scene that it was in was, you know, pretty terrifying. The T-Rex, um, that, it, it, you know, it was all good and everything. His fight with Kong went on for a little too long, but I thought it was was design, design was pretty good, yet again for its time. But at the end of the day, all the monsters were cool or anything, but those were all my favorites. Okay, filmmakers, listen closely. This is how you make a moment tense and a good payoff or a payoff good. So let's begin. So any other movie like this would have just told you what they were going to the island for and everything and just pretty much just over explain all the stuff, but not in this film. In this film, Carl, who is playing like, you know, this guy who wants like, you know, to get the picture is the only one that knows about like, you know, where they're going, doesn't even know what Eve's even really truly there, which is what builds this kind of questioning. Like, does he even know? He only knows about Kong and is really the only one who knows the name and that it's something big, that there's this tribe on the island and that there's a wall that's keeping Kong on the inside. You see, they're not telling us, us what's on the island. They're just giving us tiny clues, but there's a they're building anticipation and like, you know, building tension. You're wondering and predicting to yourself, what can be this thing? What, why is there a wall? What is Kong? But then they have Anne tied up and they're calling for Kong. It's a silent, like, you know, moment or anything and you're just scared. All you hear is the clangs of the big plate, but then he starts to come 
and there's this little silence and then he emerges and the music starts and it's not even obnoxious stock action music it's beautiful synths drums and trumpets such a beautiful build up and even more uh, like a more beautiful payoff also keep in mind kong doesn't show up till 44 fucking minutes into the film and the film's only an hour and 22 minutes which helps the build up a lot it's like alien the alien doesn't show up till like you know almost the very end which helps like build up to a really great payoff I've been waiting all video to talk about this. Now, obviously, the animation in this film would not live up to today's standards, but for the 1930s, this was some good animation in stop motion. Not even good, it was outstanding for this time. Stop motion was used for almost every monster in this film, and some humans when, like, you know, they really needed to. Like, when a human is being picked up by a monster, you could tell that there's, like, you know, a team behind, like, you know, the animation. But more of so, you could tell the team behind the animation stop motion in this film really cared. Now, there were some, were some points where the animation froze and the monster stayed still for a bit and everything but i can't really say that that's a flaw since there is really a lot of hard work put into this film and the animation side of things i'll come out i'll commemorate them to the grave with this film because they put some really hard and good work into it but obviously the technology wasn't exactly there yet to be you know where it could be perfect the camera work in this film is amazing. Like when I first wrote my like you know review out for this film, I said it was mediocre, but upon a second watch, it was really good. Now I'm not sure if this blends into camera work, but there were a few segments where you could really tell there was some green screen, but I can't really fault them for that, but it was all just really good. They did a really good job of showing the scale of all the monsters compared to the humans. Like when Khan is interacting with someone smaller, he really does look bigger and everything and you know, just looks all look good. There was this one really good shot on a mountain that's just beautiful. Even though it's in black and white, you can really tell like, you know, what the time is and I think it's just a beautiful shot. There's lots of really good camera work in this movie. The sound is really good. Obviously, it's the 1930s, so it doesn't sound great, but for its time, Kong sounds pretty scary. When Anne screams, it's, you know, iconic and everything, and just for some really good sound bits. The music in this film is very simple, but that's not a bad thing. Usually in horror movies, they go for the obnoxiously loud music, but in this film, they take a more, a more simple approach. When it's calm, it's just synths and just soothing, so you can feel calm and relaxed when sitting back on your couch watching the movie eating some popcorn. I'm not taking you ashore today. Well, I was a little scared. I guess you weren't the only one. But when something very epic or scary is going to happen, it's just beautiful drums and trumpets and everything. Just beautiful and amazing music. And that's what made this film just so amazing. I was gonna make this its own topic, but I might as well just put it in here. This film has a high entertainment value and a lots of rewatchability, like, you know, points. I definitely will watch this again soon. I can't wait to. I highly recommend this to anyone who is like, you know, definitely not seen this or anything and does love movies from this time because this is a, a freaking staple for the 1930s.